PhD, even though I'm a biomedical engineer, is on stroke. Um, I suppose we should start that 10,000 people every year in this country are admitted to hospital with the stroke symptoms, and only 75% of them actually survive. Stroke is the leading cause of disability in this country. Um, the easiest way I can describe stroke to you is to give you an example of the type of person that could be affected by stroke, and his name is Bob. Bob is your average 57-year-old man in Ireland. He's married with two children and one grandchild. He works five days a week, and he loves the soccer and the hurling and the football, and he would gladly have a pint of Guinness with, he, with each one of those. But one day, Bob is walking up his stairs to his bedroom and feels unwell. He starts to feel dizzy, and on the last step, he collapses. Bob is experiencing a stroke. Um, a typical example of this type of stroke would be, for example, everybody understands and knows how a balloon would burst in your hands, yeah? Imagine this entire marquee is full of balloons and each of them are bursting and exploding into nothing. That is essentially what Bob is experiencing in his brain right now. Each burst balloon represents the death of a brain cell as a result of a lack of oxygen, and this lack of oxygen is as a result of a blockage. 30% of these blockages occur as a result of a blood clot that originated in Bob's own heart. Irregular heartbeats such as atrial fibrillation go completely undetected in patients, especially here in this country. What happens is that the heart beats completely out of time and out of rhythm with the rest of the body and the heart, and blood begins to pool. When blood pools and stops flowing, it clots. This clot in a single heartbeat can be released into the cardiovascular system, free to travel wherever it wants in the body. If it ends up in the brain and gets stuck, then we have a problem, stroke. My research concerns these blood clots, what they're made of, how they move, and how they behave. I use animal blood to replicate the blood clots, and then using 3D printers, which are class, um, <laughs> there, I can recreate patient anatomy from the heart to the head and watch how these blood clots move and behave under a physiological simulation prior to the stroke even occurring. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for listening to my research and my talk. I'm really excited about this research and the potential impact it can have with doctors and surgeons and their stroke treatment, with engineers and designers in their development of new tools and devices to treat stroke, but really it's for the population and for people like Bob. By the time I am Bob's age, one in five of my friends will have had a stroke. And that is something that hits home with me quite a lot when I'm studying, and as I'm entering the final year, it really keeps me grounded. So thanks very much, and if any of you really want to talk about it, I love talking about this stuff. Thank you very much. Sorry, thank you, Fiona. Do we have questions from Richard? Is Maureen? So it, does your research concentrate on the cause of it, and on the lay person, so I don't have all the medical background? and to prevent, or is it to understand how it happens and then prevent? My research is mostly about um, understanding as opposed to prevention. So I'm right before the stroke attacks. Um, the first part of my research was to analyze the clots and understand how they operate under different loading conditions, um, such as squashing, so compression or tension pulling, and how that would affect how they would operate in the smaller tubes of our body. And then the second part, would be to understand the implications our own geometry plays on, on the movement of the clot. We're not all built the same, and it's a little bit like plumbing. If, if things are in different places, the clot could go to different places. So you could just be lucky, or you could just be very unlucky. So far. Perfect. Thank you. Want to be in the audience next time? Click here for tickets to InspireFest 2017.